verse 7. He says, And David said to Abitha the priest, Abimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the effort. And Abitha brought it the effort to David. The effort is representative of priesthood. David was saying, I am going to engage the, the priesthood over this circumstance, over this situation. I'm going to engage priesthood because David understood that priesthood always prevails. Priesthood never fails. Priesthood always prevails. No matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, priesthood would always come through. So he says, bring me the effort. So what David was saying is that I am going to stay with God in this matter. I am not going to take this matter into my hands. I'm going to stay with God. I'm going to, I'm going to anchor my faith on God. I'm going to wait on him. And David waited until he heard the word. He says, pursue. God told him in verse 8, pursue. He will surely overtake and without fail recover all. So it was as though David was just waiting. God speak. God speak. God speak. God speak. If you don't speak, I will not move. God speak. Because he, he knew the, 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 the viability of the word of God. He knew the, the, the strength and the power in the word of God. That once God speaks, that was the push. That was the strength. That was the energy he needed to pursue. Because the, the natural thing to do is to pursue. I mean, you are coming back and your wife has been taken. The, the, the natural thing is to run after. Wherever you put head, you go there first. If she is not there, you go to another place. So the, that's the natural instinct. So when circumstances come, there are some natural instincts that we have. That we must, by the Spirit, bring into subjection to be able to know God. What would you have me do in this matter? When people offend you, the natural thing to do is to go back at them. The natural thing to do is to is to is to let your anger roar. But being able to bring yourself into subjection and say, God, in this matter, what would you have me do? When people are riding over your head, when people it seems as though they are they are they are walking upon you. Would you react naturally or would you wait on God for those confusions in our lives, those situations that we are not sure of? Would we wait and hear or would we do the natural thing to do? He says, Bring me the effort. So he knew that what I'm about to engage in is battle, of course, right from the start. I mean, someone coming back and seeing his city on fire. That was, the spelling was battle. So if you have not realized that there is the, the, the warfare dimension of recovery, you must begin to you know, allow that consciousness to dawn in your heart. That recovery is warfare. And even when God gave the word, he said they pursued. And when they found them, he said they battled from twin lights see the next day that was warfare it means that without warfare without priesthood and priesthood is prayer without prayer you cannot recover anything so it says bring me the effort when we read it it seems like bring me the effort then david inquired of the lord shall i pursue and then god said pursue it seems like it happened within one minute but i was beginning to ponder it takes time to put on the effort so sometimes when you begin to engage with God, it may take some time. Even when you begin to engage with God, it will seem as though the enemy would increase the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, they were faithful. And they were at the verge of being thrown into a fire. And they stood for God. And the intensity of the fire was increased. The only reason the intensity was increased is for them to back out. Is for them to, to succumb to the enemy. So when you begin to engage priesthood, when you begin to, to pray, when you start up praying in the midnight, when you start up praying in your night seasons, the enemy would increase the fire. The only reason he is doing that is for you to stop what you are doing. 
so one of the tests to uh, to know am i praying is the intensity of the fire so when, when you begin to get feedback from the enemy you know yes i'm doing something it's not a time to back out it's a time to push on so elijah was on the mount and he started engaging priesthood and the first time he sent his servant go go and check the servant came back and, and told him there is nothing there is the, 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 like there is nothing the atmosphere has not even shifted a bit that was the discouragement so we are not meant to be discouraged when we begin to engage prayer and it's as though things are getting tougher it's as though the fire is getting hotter that that should encourage you to the more to know that you are hitting things in the spirit because most times the enemy usually comes at the verge of our breakthrough because from chapter 25 we begin to see the things that happened to david so twist turns 25 26 27 28 29 chapter 13 but david did not drop god like reverend would say like hot potatoes david held on and in the next chapter chapter 31 that was the death of king saul and the subsequent event was the coronation of david as king when you are at the verge of a breakthrough the enemy would set, bring forth heat to try to negotiate you out of your breakthrough to try to negotiate you out of your victory so he wants you to 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 back out he wants you to stop what you are doing he wants you to get offended so at the verge of your break you begin to find out that offenses are coming things are rising that will get you angry things are, are are coming up that wants to make you leave the church that wants to you know that wants to make you leave service that wants to make you stop serving god that wants to make you say god i am not doing again Because the enemy knows that you are at the verge of breaking in, into something great so he would come to negotiate you but the question is what would your response be